I know you know how to read, but do you know how to read the search engine result page? Whenever you do a query on Google, what you get back is what we call the SERP, the search engine result page. That's what this is. You get those 10 results starting at the very top with the very first result, and that's one that we consider the best. The second one in the list is the second best, the third one is the third, and so on. What I want to teach you in this lesson is how to read the results page because it's not just a block of pure text. It's not written by an author. It's something a little bit more complex. So I want you to learn this slightly subtle skill of reading the SERP. So as you can see here, the SERP is in generated in response to your query. My task today, given by my boss, was to understand automatic import licenses from Argentina. What do I do? So I do this query. Let me do it for you live automatic import licenses. I start off with this query, automatic import licenses, because I don't really know what they are. And so yeah, I bet you don't either. So I'm going to do this and try to understand what they really are. So what is an automatic import license? If you look through the first few results, you see a Wikipedia result. You see some documents from different trade organizations, different government organizations. What I can do now is open different links in different tabs all at the same time. And then I'm going to cruise between them. I'm going to scan across them very quickly to get a sense for what an automatic import license is. So in the Macintosh, I do Command, click, Command, click. And you see at the very top what's happening? I'm opening those different kinds of results, uh, each on the tabs at the very top. So now I can click on the, each one of these results and start to st understand. An import license is a document issued by national government, you see. Okay, so now I've kind of got an idea. What is an automatic import license? Okay, this is a great way to do a quick scan of a topic area. My case is about Argentina. So let's go look at Argentina. I'm going to modify my query, Argentina, and see what's special about automatic import licenses in Argentina. Now, truth is, I don't care if you become an expert in automatic import licenses, but I want to show you the idea here. I can modify the query, and by looking at the search results, I can start to see this is a governmental issue. This is a trade issue, a trade regulatory issue. And I can do that same thing and start to scan more deeply. But this lesson is about how to read the results page. So I need to point out a few details to you. So notice here that the terms in bold, like these right here, See those terms I've highlighted? They're bolded because they're in the search query. That is, these words come from up here. So whenever a word appears in the search query, also appears in the snippet, it will be bolded so you can easily spot it. You can recognize the terms that you search for. The other thing to point out is these three dots. See those dots right there? Those are called ellipses. And whenever you see an ellipsis, it means that something's been deleted, something's been removed from the text. There's one other thing I want to show you, which is kind of interesting. You see this downward pointing arrow right here next to export.gov? This tells you about that website. So all I did was click on it. Let me click on another one. Let's go down here to ustr.gov. And I'm going to click on, you see, that's the description of the organization that put out the web page. But if I click on the down arrow, it tells me what that organization is. So this is a way for me to get a quick sense of how authoritative that resource is. In this case, it's been around for a while. It's part of the US uh, trade representative organization. It's part of the government. Probably credible, at least about regulatory issues. Now, one thing to notice about the ellipsis is that you have to be careful about what's included and what's not included. Here's an example. I'm going to do the query, does Palo Alto allow milk carton recycling? So I'm trying to figure out if I can recycle my milk cartons in the recycle bin or not. One thing to see here is, here are the ellipses right here. See that? What can I recycle my blue container? Dot, dot, dot. Be careful. The dot, dot, dot means that something has been removed in order to fit it all into the abstract. Okay? You can't assume that the computer 
didn't delete something that was important to you. So when you see something like that, be very sure to click through to the result in order to get the full semantics, the full meaning of what that web page is trying to tell you. Now, let's dig into the details of each result. As we've seen, the blue text at the very top is the title. That's the title on the page. Right below it in the green text on the left is the URL. That's the domain name and so on. To the right of that is the organization name, the WTO. To the right of that, that downward pointing arrow gives you the information about that organization. Just below that is the snippet. Now, some people call that the abstract. It's basically an automatically generated summary of what that web page is about. And below that are sometimes blue links that will link into the page itself. Let me show that to you as well. If I do a search for WTO, you see these blue links below here? This is all part of that result block. So here's the main page. But these blue links below that tell me that there are other places within that page that people go to. So for example, here you can see that the URL is wto.org. And this result takes me to a different page somewhere in that same website. These are deep links to places inside the site where people commonly go. So if I click on this, uh, what is the WTO? This is the About page for the WTO site. Do you see that? Let me show this point with one other example. I'm going to do the search for WHO. Now, if you remember the WHO search from before, WHO or WHO stands for the World Health Organization. Now here, in addition to the regular blue links that you've got at the top, we've broken out these major links down here. These are big pieces of that site where people commonly go to. For example, here's a section on HIV AIDS, electromagnetic fields, and so on. WHO is all about health, and these are major pieces that a lot of people will travel to. There's one other thing to point out. This search box right here, this is not the Google search box. This is the search box for that organization, in this case, for who. So if I do a search for, say, disease, and hit Enter, what happens is that that query, disease, is handed to who, and they run their search algorithm over it. And what you see now are search results from who that give the list of their results on their site about disease. To make this point really strongly, breeds of cats. The question here is, how many breeds of cats are there? Now, we come to this results page, and we see this really beautiful carousel of images up here. And all I'm doing is clicking and holding, then dragging the strip from left to right. And you can see all the different breeds of cats. It's beautiful. But the question is, how many breeds of cats are there? So you see, the first result says, browse 43 different breeds of cats. Now, you might think, well, there are 43 different breeds of cats. But let's keep going down a little bit. I'm going to scroll down. And I see a snippet down here that says, profiles of more than 200 breeds. Uh-oh, how many breeds of cats are there? This tells me I have to start to dig a little bit more deeply into the topic. What I'm trying to get across in this whole section here is that sometimes the search results page will look like it's got the answer right on it. And if the answer appears at the very top in a box, it's something that's been extracted. And we'll see those a, a little bit later. Sometimes you actually have to read through the content of the pages in order to understand fully what's going on with your question. You can now use what I've told you about reading the search results page to understand more deeply what the organization is, what commonly read parts of the, of the website are, and how to search within that site. Use these tips in your own research and go on to the next activity.